What is up everybody, it is Aug here, back with another video, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about mob tagging. So mob tagging was demoed during the 1 to 60 speed leveling challenge a couple months ago, where I set the world record and then Zegers ultimately broke it, and the mob tagging portion was insane. We went from one to 25 in I think it was like four or five hours with getting a little bit of griefing. It's incredible how quick you can level. We actually did from 10 to 15 in I think under an hour because you're leveling at about 10 minutes of level at the one location. So it's an incredibly fast way to level, but a lot of people are very curious about how exactly to do it because some people run into issues when they try to do it themselves. And so I wanted to make a video diving into exactly how to do it so that there's no questions about that. And then I also wanted to show my preferred locations for the Alliance and the Horde and actually break it down into individual races. So I go through you know, every individual race, their starting zones, where I personally would go, and then showing holistic Alliance versus Horde spots so that you guys could level up as quickly as possible. But it should be a really good video. If you guys have any questions, if you wanna see some of this content live, definitely check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Arleus. Ask me anything you want. Happy to answer. And we are going to get started with the video. Hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so a lot of people are having trouble mob tagging. And I did this in my 1 to 60 speed leveling challenge, and we were able to get a ton of experience per hour. And I went into it a little bit in the video, and a lot of people then went out and tried to do mob tagging themselves, and they were having issues where they weren't getting as much experience. So I wanted to make this video to show how to properly mob tag at level 1. I also want to show, though, how to properly mob tag at any levels so that you can get an insane amount of experience at any level because it doesn't just need to be level one, but there's special trips and tricks and macros you can use, and that's where we're going to be jumping into today. So first off, with the baseline XP, I want to see how much XP I would normally get from a mob. So I'm going to kill a level two modeled boar, which is taking forever with this tune. Holy crap. But we're going to see how much XP we get. So we get 52 experience. Now to prove that mob tagging is not dead. Fifty-two experience. So there goes all the disprovement about mob tagging is dead and mob tagging doesn't work anymore. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There it is. Mob tagging still works. However, there's certain tricks you need to do. Those tricks involve your group composition. So I have a party member named Zugzug Notud. Awesome name. But he is in the same zone as me. Now, if he was sitting in Orgrimmar, this would not work because Orgrimmar is technically its own instance place. However, Darnassus does work for Night Elves. Don't ask me why. It works. I'm not questioning it. Regardless, they have to be in the same zone as you. So here, Zugzug -Zug is in the same zone. By being in the same zone and in the party with my level one, he is basically enabling my level one to get maximum XP. So my level one right now is going to get maximum XP. If he was not in the group, what would happen is that the experience would be nerfed. So attack here, we'll kill this guy. I will kill him with the same. Ooh, actually, this guy will give good XP because we pretty much killed him. We're gonna attack this guy, hit him once, mob tag. You can see 27 experience. And it's even less if we only hit him once. Ooh, gotta hit him. So we hit him once, 10 experience. So that's one fifth of the experience. So why does this work? Ultimately, you need to have one person in the group. It registers that you're in a group, so it gives you group-based experience, but then there's somebody else from outside the group killing the mob, but it's not a player because technically it's a pet. So what could you do this with? You could do this with a hunter pet. You could do this with a warlock pet. Potentially magma totems, we've been talking about it some, but I don't know if it's actually going to work and it's not going to be quick. So I recommend a hunter pet or a warlock pet. For warlocks, I recommend succubuses just because they have a lash of pain and they're really quick to kill. You can also get multiple hunters to help. If you have multiple hunters helping, it's very quick to kill. But that is how you're going to get XP. You need to have somebody in your party in the same zone. So if you're starting off in Thunder Bluff, they need to be in this zone. I think you could probably sit in Thunder Bluff based on how this is mapped, but Maybe not, but they need to be in the same zone as your level one and in the group of your level one. The hunter doesn't really matter, or the warlock, doesn't really matter what group they're in, but they just can't be in the same group as you. So they could be in a group of 40 mans, whatever. They just need to mob tag. 
how does the hunter mob tag quick? You'll notice that when I actually mob tag, I'm just alt tabbing real quick, hitting one button and then it's done. What you can do is you could set up a macro. The macro is slash assist name of the player. So aug tag in this example, slash pet attack. And then all you do is you just hit this macro and it will assist whatever aug tag is tagging or is targeting and it will attack. So even if I just targeted this mob right out here, I didn't even attack it. My player would then go ahead and send the pet out to go kill that mob. As far as pets go, I recommend using either cat or wolf or something with dash, or you can use the serpent pet from ZG because that has a long range ability to do some damage. So that's pretty nice. And then Warlocks, as I said before, Succubuses. Now this will be very fast and there's various locations I'll talk about in just a second that you can do this at. This will be very fast at the low levels, but mob tagging isn't just for low levels. You can also do it at higher levels. You can do it this trick, you know, with one person standing in the same zone, but as long as the mob is green to the person that is actually doing the killing, you will get full experience. That is why mob tagging level 48 works. If you have a level 40 tune and you hit a level 48 mob with one damage and then a 60 kills it outside the group, you're gonna get full experience because that level 48 mob is green to the level 60. Same kind of idea works if the mob is, you know, level 42 and the person's level 50. If they kill it, it works. So if you wanna have a squad of 20 mages follow you around and be, you know, five, then six, then seven, then eight, then nine levels ahead of you, arcane explosioning, all the mobs throughout your entire leveling, go for it. It should work. As far as I know, and from all of our testing, it should work. So mob tagging isn't just for level ones. However, it is very quick at level ones. There's certain spots though that you definitely definitely want to hit up if you are going to mob tag at the low levels. So let's point those out right now based on every unique starting zone. First, we're going to start with orcs. Obviously with orcs here, you want to go up here and you want to go into the cave. The vile familiars, tons of them in a small area. You basically want densely populated mobs to burn them down. Once you finish this area though, you want hyper spawns. So hyper spawns are locations where when you kill one mob, it automatically spawns another mob or very, very soon. And so over here, North Watch Hold is a great place to go because there's a ton of mobs. I'd recommend staying here till about level eight. So stay here till about level six, go over to North Watch Hold over here, or not North Watch Hold, whatever this hold is called over here until you're level about eight, and then go over to this Razor Main location over here. This Razor Main is a hyper spawn. And so you might've seen it on the stream. If you guys watched the stream when I was boosting up tunes and things like that, you can just kill mobs over and over and over in this location and they're a hyper spawn and they're just gonna keep on spawning over and over and over and over incredibly fast. Keep on going here. Once you finish here, you go up to the harpies in the top left of um, Barons. Up here, you could stay here until level, you know, like 20 if you wanted to, killing these harpies up here and they are very, very quick experience. From level 20, you can go down to North Watch Hold or these pirates over here on the side, burn them down. And after level 20, you probably want to start looking at some instances because SM is probably going to be a better experience unless you have a bunch of people following you around, but then you can mess around with some spots that might work best for you. Whether or not to kill elites, a lot of people are curious about. Elites will give you two times the normal experience of a mob. If a level 10 mob gives you 100 experience, a level 10 elite is going to give you 200 experience. That's exactly how it's going to work. However, they typically have about four times the health. So if you have a lot of people that can kill the mobs quickly, elites are worth it. If you can't kill the mobs very quickly, elites are not worth it. So bear in mind that when you're thinking about things like North Watch Hold or when you're on Alliance, think about Red Ridge Mountains, stuff like that. Let's talk about Undead. Torrin's gonna be pretty much the same zone, just kill mobs in the beginning and then work your way over. Undead, we're gonna be in Tears Fall Glades, so we're gonna be killing everything around here. And then I recommend going either up to Agamand Mills or going over to this farm over here. Both of those locations are going to be pretty good to get into the mid-levels. From there, you can go over to Silver Pine Forest, and you can go over to these farms, and these farms will be very good. There's a farm over right over here, which has... It's it's a quest in which you spawn this like ghost mob or something like that, and he randomly spawns when you hit so many mobs. Those mobs spawn incredibly fast. Just kill them over and over and over and over. Amazing hyper spawn, and that can level up very fast. For the Alliance... 
within Darnassus is probably the number one spot. It was crazy. So you come out of Shadow Glen, you come up here, right over here, where Fury Cell Shelda is, there is a bunch of harpies. Those harpies are hyperspawn. And there's multiple locations where you can stand over there and you can basically just kill those mobs over and over and over and over. Incredibly good and incredibly fast hyperspawn location. And then if you're a gnome, I would recommend that you go over to the kind of village over here or go over to the Tinker Town up here. Either one of those two spots will probably work really well. The other spot to go is Colbor Valley or Goldbor Valley, Quarry, whatever. And there's a cave in there with a bunch of mobs and you can go through there and kill all those mobs pretty quick. The easiest ones to do though is going to be Orc and Troll and Night Elf because they're going to have the best locations. Real quick, I want to dive through every single one of the spots and show you guys exactly where they are right now. First spot over here, North Watch or er, Tear Guard Keep, that's the name of it. All these little mobs around here, there is a ton. And then if you go into the building over here, there's a ton more mobs. One great loop would be to go around, kill everything on the outside, run into the building, work your way up to the top of the building, jump off the edge, and then you'll be able to kill all the mobs again. This is a great spot to get started. Spot number two for orcs and trolls is going to be right here on the map. It's this little razor main camp you can see here. This is a prime example of hyper spawning. We constantly are killing these mobs over and over, and then they just immediately spawn as soon as you kill them in this exact location. And so you can just keep on spinning around, shooting the mobs, especially if you're a hunter on the low level. It's random where they're gonna spawn. So you just gotta kind of spin around and see which ones are gonna spawn. But you can see that you can quickly kill them over and over and over. So the last horde spot that I wanna show is right around these harpies. This is Northwest Durotar. The nice thing about these is just that there's a ton of them, especially when you get further back into the back. But you can see that they're densely populated and that's the biggest thing you need. Hyper spawns are great. But if you can get a spot like this where they're just so densely populated and there's a ton of them, that's great as well. Once you work your way back into the corner here, you'll see that there are groups of three and four just scattered all around the back of this, especially around where these kind of like bush-like things are. But look at all these harpies. So you can just run around here incredibly fast, just blowing up mobs and getting a crap ton of XP. So as far as torrents go, I'm not the most familiar with torn zones, I'm gonna be honest. I've leveled a few torrents over the time, but you know, Bramble, Blade, Ravine will be a probably really good place for the first five levels. And then I think you can come up to this wild main water well up here. It looks pretty good. So I haven't been able to test this obviously on any of my tunes or anything like that. However, Venture Co mobs typically have a pretty quick respawn rate. And then there's two camps here. So you can probably kill a good amount of mobs. And so there's this one and then right over there, there's another one. And then there might be some mobs scattered around the area which you can kill as well. So this might be a good option for you guys in Mulgore. So Undead at a low level can really be you know, anywhere. The mob density is just massive. But if you really want to focus on mob density, you do have the cave in the north or west of Death Nell. It does have a bunch of spiders in it. Once you get out of there, though, this is one great spot up tucked away in the corner of Agamon Mills. Agamon Mills just in general is great for mob tagging. But there's this little cave. And inside the cave is a bunch of mobs that you can just take out real quick for a bunch of experience, as you can see right here. Are they really going to live? But this cave right here, or I guess crypt, it's more of a crypt, it's not a cave, has a bunch of mobs you can kill over and over. You can run out of here as well, and this will be a great spot. And you can just bounce back and forth between Agamon Mills and here. And as you can see, they are hyper spawning right there. So great option if you're looking for a place for undead. Another place for undead could potentially be over in here with the Scarlet guys, but it's not going to be probably as good as over in Agamon Mills just because there's not as many mobs where if you do run dry, you could be running dry or need to run for a little bit to get more mobs. Once you hit about level 10 to level 12, you can come over to the dead field, which is in Silver Pine Forest, and that is for the undead. Over here, there's this kind of area in the middle with a bunch of mobs, but also on the perimeter is a bunch of different gnolls. So you can just run around killing all these gnolls and they will ultimately hyper spawn right in the middle. And there's also the mob if you have the quest, which you can also spawn as well for some additional experience if you really want to get that quest done. So now we're at a location probably most people know, especially if you have a mage, and that is the Hills Brad Farm. So over in here, there are several farms, but most of those farms are going to have 
mobs that hyper spawn or spawn very quickly. And so there's a farm right here, farm right here, farm right here. You can go to any which one of these farms that you want to and just kill a ton of mobs. This is one of the very first blizzarding spots for the horde mages. And so that is why a lot of people know this, but you can see that there's tons of mobs and even on the perimeter, there's multiple mob groups. So this is an amazing spot for continuing to mob tag up to as high as level 30. So I accidentally left out humans earlier. It was completely a mistake on my part. They are actually the best. Their farm spots are incredible. The first one is going to be either of the two farms in Elwyn Forest. And so that's gonna be right here and right here. Both of these farms have boars. And basically what you do is you just run around in a circle in this farm, killing these boars. And as soon as you you know, kill the last one, the next round's gonna be up. And so we could just keep on, if you're a mage standing in a circle and just going like this. Also as a side little note, one huge tip for this, if you are leveling up a mage with this mob tagging strategy, get the lesser magic wand, I think it's called, the level five wand. And then all you do is you keep that wand the entire time. It has, I think, a 1.5 attack speed, which is incredibly fast. Don't even worry about upgrading to greater magic wand or anything like that that is the way to go. Just stick with the lesser and then just spin around in a circle like I'm doing right now and literally just wand these mobs. As soon as you hit the mob with a with a wand, then the hunter can kill it and you're good to go. And that's all you need to do all the way to mob tagging. If you are the Alliance and you are at least level nine, this is where you should be. Doesn't matter if you're a night elf, doesn't matter if you're a gnome, get over here because this is the best spot. Look at the amount of crabs that we have on the ground. It is absolutely incredible and it is the best type of spawn. They literally spawn on top of you when you kill them. And then you just wand them, get them into a group of four right here in the center, and then you arc an explosion again. If you have a healer and a hunter, you can sit here. Look, look at this, <laughs> they're spawning right on top of us with a rank one arcane explosion. And you can stay here for pretty much ever. It's absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible. So this is gonna be the spot, if you're an Alliance, come here, because this is the best spot in the game. I've had XP rates of up to 60,000 experience per hour, as low as level like 10. It's it's insane. I realize I didn't show exactly where on the map that was. So here it is, right on the corner, is where all the crabs will be. In the event that the crabs are busy, there's also this spot right here, not too far away, which is a great spot as well. There's a group of three trappers over here, and then there's a couple trappers over to the side. Now you do need to kill them all, but once you kill them all, they will start spawning again in various locations. And so these three in the middle over by this hut are on a separate timer, but then the rest will just spawn in various locations. But this is not as good as crabs, but it's still really good and actually has more mobs densely populated with a fresh kill set but this is another good spot. Now, if you are a gnome, I would recommend that you first obviously go through Cold Ridge Valley and kill mobs on the way to this spot. There's a bunch of mobs, pretty good mob density, but once you hit about level five, you can come over right here. And in Kolbor or Golbor Quarry, however you say this name, there's a bunch of mobs in this cave and it's a large cave. So there's gonna be a lot of mobs. You can see just from some of the mob density out here, this will be a great spot to get level 10 for sure. And then you can go over to the crabs. So outside of Darnassus, right around here is where you want to go as soon as you can if you're a night elf. There's a bunch of harpies. They range all the way from down here, all the way up towards this zone, or this area rather. But what I have found is the best spot is right up against this tree right here. And you chill out here. There's a bunch of harpies right here, on the outside over here, back here, and in the corner over there. And what happens, how did that mob resist me? See, there you go, 99% chance. They could always resist though, guys. But as you can see, there's a bunch of harpies. You can burn them down really easily and they are hyper spawns. So as soon as you kill down these harpies, especially if you're a night elf hunter or something like that, it's very easy to mob tag. More will be spawning right in the middle or right on the backside or something like that. And so you just keep on going over and over with these guys and it'll be very fast XP. To get to level 10, it is not as good as crabs, but it is great for night elves. Once you hit level 16, the crabs stop getting as much experience so we can move on to the next place. That is gonna be over in Red Ridge Mountains and it is going to be on these Red Ridge poachers right around here. This is a great spot to get probably like 18 or so, maybe 19, just sitting here. They are hyper spawns. However, they do also have some range damage. So it's the first place where you're kind of gonna need to watch out 
for your health and maybe have the person that's boosting you use some bandages on you occasionally or maybe just have a healer along or if you're a healer yourself then you can heal yourself but this is a great spot another great spot is right over here with the murlocs as well that is another good spot that you guys can go to so here's the murloc spot we have a bunch of murlocs here there's some in the water there's a lot of them and they hyper spawn the bad part is that they are casting frost abilities so you're going to get slowed and they actually do a decent bit of damage so i wouldn't come here without a healer but this if you have a healer is probably going to be even better than the mongrels if you have a lot of people boosting you the next best spot is going to be in this little castle thing there is a bunch and i mean a bunch of orcs but the majority of them are elites so as we said before they're going to have about four times the amount of health but they're also going to give a lot more xp so if you have a bunch of people helping you this is a ton of experience what i would recommend doing is running through here running through the castle itself running along the perimeter along the outside doing this tower running along there and then making a loop around the backside here and back here is actually where if you do not have a bunch of people helping you out, it would probably be the best spot. And that is a bunch of these little camps of orcs and mongrels as well down here. They range from 22 to, I believe, 26 at the max. But there's a bunch of them around here, a bunch of little camps, and you can get some really good experience while you're running around and waiting for other respawns or things like that. But you can see groups of four, groups of four. You can run all the way around here. I recommend running around this tower, clearing all the mobs in the tower jumping down behind it clearing these groups throughout here and then once you clear out all of these groups you can kind of head over this way and go over the top of this hill which will take you back down below the castle and here is where you can kill some final mobs before looping back around back into the castle all right everyone that wraps up today's video i hope you all enjoyed it and if you did please subscribe and leave a like and a comment below to let me know so and if you guys have any other ideas for any other videos please let me know in the comments below also check out the description for the twitch where i do all this live and also for my twitter and discord where you guys can be notified of any future updates and when i'm going to go live on stream so i'll see you guys in the next video